And let us see the next differentiate between that is differentiate between primary, secondary and tertiary amine. I request you all not to go anywhere unless and until you completely watch this video because I seriously want each one of you all to score well. So primary amine. Now, what is the primary amine? The amine in which the nitrogen, the compound in which the nitrogen is attached only to one carbon atom that is called as what? A primary amine. Okay. Now, this is the primary amine. This primary amine, we are going to treat with benzene sulfonyl chloride. Now, what are we going to do is we are going to react all the three primary, secondary and tertiary amine with something called as benzene sulfonyl chloride. And when I react it with benzene sulfonyl chloride, what's going to happen is this is going to follow a solubility pattern. It's not going to show any color change here. It's going to follow a solubility pattern. Looking at that solubility pattern towards the end of the reaction, I'm going to draw a table. Looking at the solubility pattern, you'll be able to identify which one is primary, which one is secondary, which one is tertiary amine. Okay, so now can I write this uh, NH2 in this format? Of course I can. So H and Cl will combine to form HCl. Okay, H and Cl will come out of form HCl and quickly this NH will get attached in place of Cl. So I'm rewriting benzene sulfonyl chloride now as benzene, then sulfonyl. Remember that sulfonyl is a very strong electron withdrawing group. It's one of the most powerful electron withdrawing group. The same electron withdrawing group is also present in sulfuric acid. And that's the reason why sulfuric acid is a very strong acid. Okay, so here I have just copy pasted it. I've written down over here. I've written the sulfonyl group. I've removed the Cl along with the H to form HCl and this sulfonyl group has got connected with a primary amine that's methanamine. Now, after this has been formed, now observe this thing very carefully. Till now, amine was a base. Earlier, amine was a base. Why it was a base? Because your amino group or the amine group was connected to an electron donating car electron donating carbon or electron donating alkyl group. So this was connected to an electron donating alkyl group. So sir, it is connected with an electron donating alkyl group over here as well. I agree with you. It is connected with an electron donating group over here as well. But now it is attached to, connected to, surrounded by an electron withdrawing group, a super powerful electron withdrawing group, due to which the electrons will get attracted. Now the electron density, electron cloud will get pulled towards the sulfonyl group. And because the electron uh, sulfonyl group is a very powerful electron withdrawing group and it's pulling electrons and hence nitrogen will now pull electrons of hydrogen and it is ready to kick out this hydrogen and now when it gives away the hydrogen ion it will automatically become an acid okay so because H plus ion donors are acids okay so this H plus will be donated the moment it is in contact with KOH so KOH is the second reagent which I'm adding the first reagent which I had added was uh, benzene sulfonyl chloride. The second reagent which I'm adding is potassium hydroxide. And when I'm adding this, what's going to happen is this KOH is a base. And this, remember, this is an acidic hydrogen now. What it is, it is an acidic hydrogen now. And acids and bases react to form salt and water. So obviously, H and OH are going to combine to form H2O, salt and water. Water is formed. Now let's form the salt. The K plus will get attached over here, forming a salt, a potassium salt. So here, let's keep everything same right copy paste then here we are going to attach n n is attached to ch3 and here you are getting this k so basically this is k plus and n minus okay basically this is k plus and n minus so this is a potassium salt and obviously it's soluble in water so this particular compound which we had formed after addition of uh, benzene sulfonyl chloride it was insoluble but now because this is a salt and it is soluble in water it is soluble it's a clear solution Okay, and the moment you add the third reagent, so what's the third reagent? Third reagent is HCl. So the moment you add the third reagent, what's going to happen? K and Cl will combine to form KCl and hydrogen will be restored. So when hydrogen is restored, again, it becomes insoluble. It will, you will get back the same compound. I need not even write this, okay? You will just get back the same compound, right? You'll get back hydrogen over here. So this was what? Insoluble. So what kind of solubility pattern is it following? If, if you still want me to write, I'll just write it for you for your satisfaction. So here we'll get what? NH and CH3. Okay, so this is the same compound as the previous one and this is insoluble. So what kind of solubility pattern is it following? Now quickly have a look at this table. This table is going to be super important for you. Okay, and this is, this is going to help you decide 
which amine is it okay so if it is a primary amine okay or rather i would say after adding koh we don't know which amine this is after adding bsc to this if it is becoming insoluble then after adding koh it is becoming soluble and after adding where is the straight line ha huh? after adding the third reagent what is the third reagent hcl it is becoming insoluble again so if this thing is happening in your reaction you should understand that it is a primary amine if this solubility pattern is being followed which solubility pattern insoluble soluble insoluble insoluble soluble insoluble if this pattern is being followed you can automatically understand that your amine the amine which you are testing is primary amine then let's go for the next amine like if if you are getting a pattern of totally insoluble 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 then you should understand that your amine is a secondary amine okay and if you are getting this solubility pattern of insoluble okay insoluble insoluble and at the end soluble after adding hcl then you should understand that it is a tertiary amine okay let's have a look at the reaction we have already seen the reaction of primary amine let's see how secondary amines behave they are insoluble throughout why are they insoluble throughout let's see okay so if this is your secondary amine nitrogen attached to two alkyl groups is secondary amine of course right lone pair of electrons hydrogen it's basic in nature rather it's more basic isn't it okay so more basic than primary amine so here we are adding the first reagent that is bsc benzene sulfonyl chloride okay so when i'm adding benzene sulfonyl chloride this h and cl just like the previous case will combine quickly to form hcl and what you're going to get is ch3 and oh sorry uh, we'll draw this first benzene then sulfonyl okay benzene sulfonyl and then the nitrogen okay it will get because hydrogen we have removed from the nitrogen so the nitrogen will only get connected over here with two alkyl groups so here we are having two alkyl groups along with the lone pair of electrons now you can see that the same sulfonyl group is continuing to pull electrons of nitrogen but unfortunately there is no hydrogen over here so there is no acetic hydrogen over here and if there is no acetic hydrogen over here and i add koh koh is simply not able to dissolve or not able to react with this intermediate compound why because there is no acetic hydrogen there is no acetic hydrogen so there is no acid base reaction to form salt and water so this remains this is this was insoluble even after adding koh it remains insoluble after adding koh also it does not react basically it remains insoluble and even after you add hcl it will remain insoluble even after adding hcl it is remaining it is continuing to be insoluble so that's the reason why if you see look at the table secondary amine is what insoluble 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 throughout now have a look at what's happening with tertiary amine basically tertiary amine does not have this hydrogen only so if i can just show it to you in this reaction itself right so this is a tertiary amine it does not have an alpha hydrogen to combine with the cl so because it does not have an hydrogen to combine with the cl it won't react at all okay so you'll get insoluble over here and even if you add koh it remains insoluble but the moment you add hcl with this so hcl reacts with this and becomes what soluble okay because it can form a salt with this lone pair of electrons are still there and therefore it will form a soluble clear solution and that's how tertiary amines behave with this test this test is called as hinzberg test what is this test called as hinzberg test so this hinzberg test is used for identification of primary secondary and tertiary amine according to this table hope you have understood whatever we have done today and if you want some more uh, reactions some more tips some more distinguish between some more convergence okay i'm planning to uh, make another video on convergence okay so stay tuned do subscribe the channel and hit the like button thank you i really wish that each one of you do extremely well in your upcoming exam thank you